It is not possible for us to keep all of it and not become overwhelmed by it. Welcome to the Minimal Mom Podcast. Dawn reaches a million women each month with practical tips to simplify your home. If you're looking for more help, she has over 700 videos on YouTube to help you declutter quickly. Today, Dawn answers two questions submitted by viewers. Here's the first. Hi Dawn, huge fan here. My question is about my kids' schoolwork. My daughter is in pre-K and my son is in the second grade. I have a hard time knowing what to keep and what to throw away. I am emotionally attached to all of it. Like I just need help and ideas on what questions to ask myself about whether or not I should keep something or, or throw it away. I think what to keep from our children's childhood falls into the category of things we were not taught growing up. <laughs> and so even if you're past this season of life where you have small kids, I still think the questions we're going to talk through could still be helpful with other types of sentimental clutter too. So you might still find this helpful. And so the very first question that I would ask you is, what are you afraid of? So usually when we're having a strong attachment to things, it is because we are fearful of something. And so for example, if there is something hanging in our closet that still has the tags on it and we know we should get rid of it, but yet we feel this like really strong connection to it, often we are fearful that if we declutter it, then that will actually mean that we wasted money on it. So we were wasteful with our resources. And most of us don't have lots of extra resources just to be spending on clothes we're not wearing. It could be that we're fearful that we'll never get down to the size to fit into that type of clothing again. Or it could just be this reminder that we don't make good buying decisions and we fear that we are going to continue to repeat this pattern in the future and I'm never going to be someone who does a good job when I'm making purchases. So it can be helpful to think about what is actually causing me to feel really attached. So in regards to kids things, am I fearful that I'm not going to remember this really special season in their life? Am I fearful that I'm not going to remember the things that they did and that they said and the things that they wore, the really cute things that they did? Am I fearful that I'm not going to have these memories to share with them when they're older or to share with their kids or their spouse sometime down the road? Am I fearful that they are going to think that I didn't do a good job archiving their childhood and they're going to get to a point where they want to see all the special things from their childhood and I don't have those for them to show them? Am I fearful that the next season as they get older isn't going to be as sweet as the season that we've come out of when they were younger. And so I really think it's helpful if we can narrow this down. It might be more than one thing because it helps us to know then what path to take. Let's play out a few of these different ideas. So I'm fearful that I'm not going to remember these seasons of my kid's life. And I'll tell you, this happens to me from time to time. Um, now that our youngest, Gage, he's eight, so we don't have little kids in the house anymore, right? And sometimes I'll see like on Facebook memories or my phone, you know, your phone probably does that too, where it'll pop up a memory from the past. And I see these pictures of Gage, especially when he was like two or three. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't remember him being so chubby. He's very lean now. And so when I see these pictures of him or Maggie, and they're they like have these cute little chubby cheeks and they're more full, you know, they still just have like the baby fullness to them. I'm like, I don't remember them. They were very petite infants too, but they did go through this season of being like really chubby and cute. And I'm like, how do I not remember that? Like, what kind of mother am I that I don't remember them? being like that. And then I'm like, okay, it's fine. Like we had four kids ages four and under for a while there, right? Or we've had, you have other things going on in life. You can't just focus on how cute your kids are when they're little, right? But I will tell you that that thought sneaks in sometimes and I'm like, oh my goodness, have I kept enough photos? Do I have enough reminders of this? And the truth is that we, we have never had more photos of our kids. And so I don't think I need to keep as many physical items of my kids because we do have so many photos. And so to me, that helps me reconcile how much physical stuff I actually need to keep because I realize 
oh my goodness, I have every month of their childhood documented on my phone, right? I'm more careful now. I don't take as many photos now because I realize even that is inventory that I have to manage. But in regards to remembering the artwork that they made and the Mother's Day and the Christmases and the plays they were in and the school things and all of that, it is very well archived in, in photos. So that helps me to realize that I don't need to keep as many physical items. Another thing that's really helpful for me is to think about curating a special collection of items that I will pass on to my children when they get older. So for us, that takes the form of memory boxes. So you've, you've maybe seen them. We have these clear Rubbermaid totes, one for each child, and we put the most special memories in there. However, I'm very careful to limit how much stuff we put in there because here's another question that I would ask you how much of your childhood stuff have you wanted from your parents? Now, some people are more attached than others, but I remember when my mom started saying like, hey, you can take this and you can have this and I'm not leaving your bedrooms in our house as a shrine to your childhood and your middle school years and high school years and your sports you played and all of that. And then she started giving to it uh, and then she started asking us, do you want this? Do you want this? Will you take this? And I just remember thinking like, this is overwhelming. I don't I don't hardly want any of this. And honestly, a lot of it has stayed there because I didn't want to have to deal with it. I'm like, I have moved on. I have gotten married. I have kids of my own. I've had my own accomplishments now. Lots of great things that happened during my childhood, but I only need a small collection of items from my childhood to be able to remember it fondly myself and to be able to share with my kids. So if you think about your kids when they are older, how much stuff are they going to want? And I think it gets less and less every generation that goes by. And so I see it as a gift if we can give our kids a very special curated collection of items from their childhood. And so for me, that's what the memory box is. And then like I kind of touched on, the memory box also serves as a limit. We can't keep everything. And I really like the book um, by Peter Walsh called Let It Go. And he talks about if you have too much of any one thing, nothing special. So he'll say, you you can't keep all of the spelling tests. Just pick out the ones that you got the best grade on. You don't want to keep all of the postcards from all of the vacations. Keep one or two or three that are special. If you keep all of your child's stuffed animals, they're not all equally special. So pick out two or three. If you keep all of their favorite toys from growing up, it's too much. Like it's not special. So pick out one or two very special toys, one or two very special outfits, one or two very special jerseys or trophies. It is not possible for us to keep all of it and not become overwhelmed by it. And isn't it amazing how quickly things that are supposed to be special and bring back happy memories become a burden. And you have experienced that if you've ever had a loved one pass away and you have been the one in charge of going through all of their things or you've inherited all of their stuff. And so if we can step back and look at the bigger picture, ultimately, what form do I want this stuff to take in my home? And so what I love about our memory boxes is that we actually go through them very pretty frequently with the kids. They love to sit down and go through it, and I love to do it with them, again, because it's not an overwhelming amount. In the past, when the kids were little, I had bins and bins of baby clothes and artwork and toys and, you know, all the things, right? And it would have been awful to think about pulling those out and letting the kids rummage through them and pull stuff out and say, when did I wear this and what's this from? That would have been horrifying because it would have created such a gigantic mess that I would not do it. Like I just wouldn't do it. And so again, by having this special collection, now we go through it frequently and we remember the memories and it is so much fun. I truly see it as a gift that you can give yourself and your kids to curate a special collection of things that you will revisit frequently. So again, then what goes into the memory bin? It is the most special of special things. And so this container, again, from the outside, if you have not tried to do this yet, from the outside looking in, you're probably like, that is too restrictive. How could I possibly fit my child's whole childhood into one bin? Like you are off your rocker, Dawn, right? Like that is not physically possible. Like I have 12 bins per child. How could I possibly pare it down to one? And I want to challenge you then don't, don't think of going from 12 to one. Think of going from 12 to six and then think of going from six to three. 
and then maybe someday from three to one. We don't have to go all the way down to one <laughs> right away. But what you're going to find is that not everything is equally special. When we have a whole bin of baby clothes, it's like, oh, they're all so precious and you know, it's so hard to remember. And I don't want to forget when they were that little. But when you actually start going through the clothes, you find that there are outfits that are much more special than the others. And so as you begin to hold them up and say, okay, my memory box is limited. Is this piece worth a spot in the memory box? Is it that special that it is going to take up in there? You're going to start to find, now that you have something to compare it to, that there really are some outfits that are way more special than others and others that are kind of stained, kind of deteriorated, not really that special. If you were going to pull it out and share it with your child, there's not really a story that goes along with it. And then you're also going to find that for some of them, you have pictures of them in that outfit and that will suffice. So I love that we have some of our children's baby clothes. I think it's so fun to hold it up and to, you know, for them to be like, I can't believe I was that little, right? It's so fun. I love that, but I don't need... 20 outfits to accomplish that. We have the outfit they came home from the hospital in. We have outfits that maybe they wore for their first Christmas or their first other holiday that was a major holiday around their birthday. And then for each of them, I usually have like one or two outfits that they loved that they just like wore all the time, right? Um, like Maggie, our, our second daughter, she loved shoes. So I have multiple pairs of shoes in hers. And then for Corbin, um, we thought that he was going to be a, a girl. The ultrasound said, oh, it's another girl. It's her third girl. So Tom's sister had given us these girl clothes for Christmas. And I put them in because it's such a fun way to remember like, buddy, you were such a fun surprise when the doctor said it's a boy, right? And so we really don't need lots of memorabilia to be able to jog these memories and to relive these times. But perhaps the biggest thing I want to encourage you is that I think for most of us, we want to live our lives looking forward. It's fun to go back sometimes and to visit the past, but ultimately we want to keep looking forward and teach our kids that those are super fun seasons. I loved when you were little. I love the cute things you used to say, but I also love who you're becoming and what you're becoming interested in. And I know like you've probably heard other moms say this, like each season, it, it, like, it just keeps getting cooler and better. And so there is so much to look forward to. And so I don't want to take away from that because I'm so preoccupied trying to archive the past. So I want to keep living, looking forward and occasionally visit the past. Hi Dawn, my name is Stephanie and I have a question regarding baby items. I'm not quite done with my family, but I don't know when I'm going to get pregnant again. Basically my question is, what do I do with my bins full of baby stuff, baby clothes, baby bottles and everything? I don't want to declutter everything because I don't want to buy everything again, but I know I have too much but I don't know where to start. So if you just could help me with this, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one with that issue. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh-huh. And definitely not the only one with that issue. And <laughs> this is a pretty common question. So what was really fun, uh, a YouTube video I did recently talked about just in case items or someday items. And there was multiple comments on there from women who said, I got rid of all of my baby stuff because I thought we were done. And then we either got pregnant again unexpectedly or we adopted or fostered or something. And the comments went on to say that as soon as anyone in our community heard that I'd gotten rid of baby stuff and we needed it, that we had so much offered to us and more than enough for the next baby. And so I think baby stuff is the easiest stuff on the planet to come by. <laughs> Again, it kind of bothers me that our culture does not borrow stuff anymore, um, that because it most of it is used for such a short season. And so I would say set a couple containers of what you're going to keep, like two Rubbermaid totes, Put your most favorite things in there, things that won't deteriorate, things you know for sure that you would use for another baby, and I would let the rest of it go. Isn't it amazing how clothing and even things like bottles and sippy cups deteriorate in storage or even how styles change? I couldn't believe 
you know, our kids, even, you know, we would pass stuff down from one to another, how much styles would change. And I don't even, I don't worry that much about our kids being super fashionable, but it was interesting to me. I'm like, oh, wow, this, you know, this is just stuff I probably wouldn't choose to use for this next baby. And so I would keep your absolute favorites, things that you used all the time with your other children. And then if there are any things that you that you didn't use with your previous children, but you're keeping for just in case, or you're like, well, it didn't work with the other kids, but maybe I'll use it with the upcoming kids. I remember we had gotten like a baby wipe warmer and I never used it because it was just kind of like one more thing. And so I I kept continuing to keep it throughout our children because I'm like, well, maybe the next one will be like a winter baby and then I'll be glad that I have it or whatever. Got through all four children, did not use it once at all, right? And so I think it's really important to know, and you've probably noticed this if you have more than one child, that either your tastes change, the seasons change, or the baby's tastes change. Some babies love sitting in a bouncy seat or a rock and play or what, I don't know. I'm a little out of date with like what all the current things are. Um, some babies love that. Others don't, right? Some babies like a certain type of carrier or you like a certain type of carrier and not another style. And so keep your absolute favorite things. And then I would let the other stuff go, especially bulky items and trust that you could easily, uh, very easily obtain it again in the future and maybe even a better version of it. And so if, I mean, you all know too, if you go on Marketplace, you can find anything. I remember Diana with now, when she was pregnant with Cora, their third, she wanted to get the bottle maker, like the formula, baby Brezza or whatever it's called. So she just went on Marketplace. She found one for super inexpensive. And like the next day, then she had that ready to go, right? Anything. I mean, anything baby related, you can find on Marketplace now. But again, keep the things that you love. If you have a stroller that you just love, then keep that. Maybe the infancy, right? But I would set a limit to how much that you want to keep. Put that stuff in first and then let the other stuff go. Another thing is that most of us have too much baby stuff anyways, and so this can be a really good opportunity to pare it down. We actually need very little (laughs) when it comes to babies, right? We just don't need a lot. And I think it can be really confusing because you'll hear other moms and they'll swear by something like, oh my goodness, this caused them to sleep through the night or this made them nap better or this made them less fussy or whatever. And then it's like, as a mom, if you have a new baby that's not sleeping or is fussy or whatever, you're like, I will buy anything. (laughs) to get them to do that, right? And so often we buy things and then we get them and then we're like, why isn't it working for my baby? Why isn't it working for me? And so I think it's really helpful for us to understand and to have the mindset that every baby is different, every mom is different, geographical locations are different, having supportive family or friends around, our own experiences growing up or how much experience we've had with babies, that can cause it to be different. And so there's so many different factors at play at what works and what doesn't. And it can be very confusing when we're getting all of these messages of all of these favorite things of everyone around us, right? And you know too, right? Like moms are not afraid to tell you like, what they love and what works the best and to make you feel like you need it too. So it can be, it really can be very hard to stay minimal when you have babies and little kids. But we also know that all of this extra stuff is really stressful. And so I remember um, when we came home from the, the hospital with Adeline, it was a long, it was like a 57 hour like attempt at delivery ended up with a C-section, you know, but like I tried everything. Right. But it was very long. And then with a C-section then I was in the hospital for three days. Um, and so it was like, finally, by the time I got back home, it had been like almost five days. Right. And we had gotten, you know, cause Adeline was our first, we had gotten flowers and gifts in the hospital and we came home and, and they were all on like the dining room table and the counter and everything. And I remember just being like, I cannot handle any of this. And so I threw all of the flowers away. I put the gifts in one of the back bedrooms. I was like, I just need my house back. I need it feeling normal. I need something to feel normal right now. And it was just amazing how having all of that stuff around, even though a lot of it was good and beautiful and valuable and I would later want and use, but I just remember it feeling like, I need my house back to like the simple, peaceful space that it used to be right now because when everything else and hormones and everything else is at play and lack of sleep and all of that, I just need my environment to feel like it's in order and that it's peaceful right now. And so I do think it is important that we try to keep a simple environment. 
um, when our kids are little. I think everybody does better in it. But like I said, I do also know that this is not always easy. And so complete permission for you to get rid of things that aren't working, that other people said were miracle products that just haven't seemed to work for you. You don't have to try and figure them out. You don't have to try and watch YouTube videos to better use them. There is nothing wrong with you. It, it is just simply some products work better for other babies and other moms than others. And so if it doesn't work for you, you can let it go. You can sell it on Marketplace. You can donate it. You don't have to feel guilty every time you look at it anymore. And it really doesn't matter if it was a gift or someone gave it to you. You you need your house to be peaceful right now. And so you have permission to let that stuff go. Also, if you want to try something out, see if you can borrow it from a friend or another mom you know that has little kids. Everything that I have experienced myself and from others is that they want to share this stuff because we often feel guilty about all of the baby stuff we acquire that does not get used very much or for such a short season. So we really love to be able to share it with other moms so they can test it out or so it can get a little more use. And that actually feels really good for all of us. So if you do know someone around you too, I would always recommend borrowing something if you want to test it out before you actually buy it. All right. Well, I think those are really good questions and it's it's not necessarily something that like you'll solve in a weekend or a day, but just keep going layer by layer through kid stuff and baby stuff. Keep the big picture in mind. What do you want your house to feel like? What do you want your children's childhoods to look like? What do you want them to look back and say about you when they're older? For most of us, we want them to think of us as loving and peace-filled moms that, yeah, does, does life get wild once in a while? Yeah. Yes, but we visit that. We visit crazy town from time to time, but we don't live there. Most often our home is peaceful and it's a safe place where we can all recharge. So you deserve that. And I know you want to provide that for your kids as well. All right. Well, I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll look forward to visiting with you again soon. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're looking for more support, be sure to check out The Minimal Mom on YouTube too. 